How's those fantasy teams doing? Man, mine is doing trash. For real? Yeah. He is. His yeah. is. This thing's so bad. I think I'm up by 57 in one league and then up by like 30 in another. <laughs> I'm I'm losing. Yeah, it's your fault, dude. You chose Trevor Lawrence. J.K. Dobbins is starting. He tore yeah. his Achilles last week and you started him. Yeah, guys. OBJ is on the bench too right now. Guys, before you I, get I have not it. been looking. <laughs> Let's see. I'll look at mine. I can't believe you. Yeah. Uh, I'll put mine also. Let's see. I'll Lawrence only has 11 points. Yeah, that's your problem. Over, that's your problem. He got strapped. Kelsey only had 10 points. Christian McCaffrey's got 20 in one league. Mm-hmm. Waller's got 13. McLaurin has 15. Odell only got four points. I'm up by 63 in that league. I got to give props to my boy Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> that man did terrible last week, but this week, 25 points. I got to give props to the Buccaneers defense, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, and Baker Mayfield, He's my out. man. Who's out? Odell. He has a quad injury. Yeah, we. Oh, yeah, we talked about <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that. Oh, now I'm up by 31. What just happened? I think Wilson just threw a pick. I'm up by a lot. Yeah. I have a seventy six or seventy six percent chance the of winning. Game, game going. I think we're still winning. For real? Yeah. How about them boys? The boys. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. How about them Saints? Fantasy right. football. I'm sorry, that was a baby. Funny. Don't even, bro. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome back. Episode 2 <laughs> yes, of the sir. 412 Leadership Podcast. We are so excited yep. that you guys are back for another episode. Let's My go. name's Garrett. My name's Matthew. And I'm Gabe. And we are your team here at 412 yes, Leadership. Episode 2. Today yep. is going to be a good one, but we were talking about fantasy football just a second ago. You guys let us know in the comments or in the Q&A, how is your fantasy football team doing? doing. Yep. All right. So, super excited for today's episode. What are you guys ready for Let's for today? Let's do it. Uh, I'm excited for our new setup. We got some new mics. Oh, yeah. The new uh-huh. setup, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If you're listening, you can't. But if you're listening, you can probably tell yeah. it sounds a, a lot, lot better. better. Yes, sir. Yep. Got Chris Flegg. Got to give yep. a shout out to Chris Flegg. <laughs> My man. Teamed up with him. He got us hooked up. We are so thankful. And this is awesome. We got us a little setup. We can take it on the road, too. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. We got us something going here. All right. Yep. Well, let's get into it. Let's go. All right. So, Gabe, tell them what we're going to be talking about today. All right. Today's subject is how to become a young leader. And do you want to take us into the first question? Or? I can, yeah. So, really, today we're just going to be talking about how do you become that young leader. If you haven't, go watch and listen to episode one mm-hmm. of What is a Young Leader? And there we break down kind of what a young leader is. Make sure you go and listen to that. Today, we're going to be taking another step and talk about how do we become that young leader. Yeah. So the first point that we have here is in the first step to becoming a young leader is you have to know that you're called to be a young leader. So either you guys can answer this. How do you know that you're going to be called, that you're called to be a young leader? I think you kind of just know. Yeah. Like, like I want to say it's a talent, but I feel like... Yeah. You, you're called to that. Uh-huh. Like you, you feel yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And Chris Hodges said, if you know, you know. If you so, know, you know. So Let's go. You'll know. Like, <laughs> if and, you know. If you know. <laughs> another way that I've heard it say is everybody is called to be some sort of leader. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to my dad yesterday. Uh, we were talking about this episode, kind of breaking it down. He said it this way. John Maxwell says uh, influences leadership no matter what. And he also said it this mm-hmm. way. If nobody's following you, you're not a leader. Mm. So if you're not influencing influencing anybody, you're not a leader. But I think everybody's called to be a leader in yeah. some way, in some yeah, shape form. or form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the first part of that, kind of know you're called to be a young leader. The second question of that is, why are we called to be young leaders? Like, why does God call us to be young leaders? Well, we kind of covered this last week. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. it builds a culture. So, yeah, like, for sure. We kind of, I think we went more in depth in episode one. So Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. I feel like God chooses the ones that have influence on people. Yeah. yeah. So like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You gotta have like that good influence. Mm-hmm. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you talk about building a culture, you yeah. have to be able to build the next generation because I mean we talked about it last week also in depth. Like if one generation doesn't have a leader, then it falls on every other generation. Yeah. You have to keep that strong culture going. We talked about that a little in episode one. That's another reason that you should go listen to episode one if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. You'll see the difference in our setup. For oh, sure. Yeah, episode for sure, one for and sure. two. Yeah, so 
like we talked about, first step of becoming a young leader is you have to know you're called to be a young leader. Mm -hmm. Gabe, what's our second step? All right, so our second step is you have to accept your calling. Yeah, but you can't hide from it. Like yeah, you, you yeah. have to go. Like you, yeah. you just have to go for it. Like you can't go halfway in. Mm -hmm. You have to go full. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you can run from it as long as you want, but it's still gonna yeah. be there. Yeah. You hear people all the time talk about like, you know, accept your calling when you know it's there. Like they mm -hmm. talk, they tell you hear stories all the time. Like I ran from it and it just never left, and yeah. it was eventually like now I know I have to, mm -hmm. and you. Mm -hmm. Rather would accept your calling now and go through all the good times than have to go through all the bad times to get you to accept your calling. Yeah. Yeah. So And I think it'll be so much more achieving if you actually mm -hmm. went full in and yeah. got to change mm -hmm. something. So So kind of how do you accept that calling? Like we talk about going all in, but like what does that look like? Like how is accepting your calling like what what do you think that would kind of be? I think you kinda of gotta pray about it. I mean mm -hmm. for sure. You don't really yeah. I was always taught you don't really make any, you don't do anything big or like life changing without praying about it, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, because God's always the first step to anything. So. For sure. Yeah. And God will give you that confirmation exactly. through prayer. Mm -hmm. No doubt. What do you got? Anything on that or? Pretty much that's it. Just yeah. praying about it. That's like Just the biggest about thing it. you can do. Accepting your calling. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing is what does accepting your calling mean? Like I get, we already covered it going all in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Accepting your calling means that you've decided like you're going to go all in and you're going to go just full on out for being that young leader and being that good influence on the people around you. That's what it looks like. It's just going all in. It doesn't have to be anything special, really. There's nothing other, There's nothing to it other than going all in. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do anything special. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. So that's what we got. So we got number two, your step to becoming a young leader. Second step is you accept your calling. Matthew, give us the third step. Third step is surrender your plans. And that's a hard one. Yeah, that's <laughs> very the... <laughs> hard. Uh, so, well, I know we all have like personal stuff for this, but we yeah. like we kind of go into that in this question. What does surrendering your plans mean? I think it means whatever plans that you have set up for your life, your dreams, whatever you want to be when you're older, you just completely get rid of it. Throw it away. Focus on God's plan. Yeah. But like for me, that was like, you know – the last couple months, I want to be like this baseball player. I want to mm -hmm. go play baseball in college. I want to do this and that. And then we go to motion conference. And mm -hmm. it's like God's like putting everything on my heart like, no, you're supposed to do this. And so for me, it was really just surrendering that dream of I know I want to go do all this. But really, God, what God has for me is stepping into the ministry and being that young leader that he's called me to be. And kind of like we we're talking about running away from your calling, trying to go through your own plans yeah, and like if you, I guess if you got your dream, it'll feel good, but it won't fulfill you. Yeah, mm -hmm. your dream. When you, yeah, when you do do your calling, then you get fulfilled. Yeah, I've it's heard really a lot of good. stories about that. Yeah, really though, just like surrendering surrendering your plans is like you really just have to um, give up your dreams, mm -hmm. and uh, I've heard it this way: like your dreams might be bigger, but God's dreams are better. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, like God's plans are always gonna overcome your troubles and trials and I think that's really what it is it's just going all in and just really giving up your plans like I know mm -hmm. like we all have yeah. had big dreams and it's like now we've kind of given those up like for me it's yeah. like like I talked about baseball like at this point I know that's not what God has for me and so I still love the game and I'm still going to work hard and play mm -hmm. hard this last year but I know that God has bigger plans for me yeah ahead. Second question about surrendering your plans. How does that affect young leaders? Like, how does that, how does surrendering, surrendering your plans affect you in the long run as a young well, leader? Well, I think like uh, peer pressure and temptation and stuff. Like, yeah. your peers are definitely going to try to force you mm -hmm. to yeah. do something. Uh, I can't remember what your dad said this morning, but it was like, you're going to do, if you step out in your faith, there's going to be people that go against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's always going to be, uh, somebody or some people that aren't going to like what you're doing mm -hmm. but that's when you got to pray about and yeah. uh, accept your calling so talking about that kind of like giving in to peer pressure and like settling into what we're familiar with mm -hmm. uh i knew it was somewhere in my notes i was kind of looking for it but um micah said this at first wednesday a couple of weeks ago uh 
it's a question that we all should ask ourselves. It's this question, how often do we settle for familiar and miss God's best? Mm. And it just goes along with what you were just talking about, that peer pressure mm-hmm. and that familiar, familiar, yeah. familiarity. <laughs> it goes along with that. Like you, If you are going to settle for that, you're going to miss out what God's best plans yeah. are for you. And that's why it's just so important to really surrender your plans. And I think... You said it perfectly, just peer pressure and yeah. not settling. Is yeah. familiarity a word? Familiarity. Is that even a word? <laughs> yeah, like being like... It's like that, I think it's a word. It's gotta be. It's gotta gotta be. be. Some of these words do not gotta sound like be. words. <laughs> gotta be. Like scrumbunctious? Yeah. How do you say it? Scrumptious. Yeah, scrumptious. <laughs> like that's not even a word. Come on. So what do you have on that? Like how does do you think that affects you, like a young leader? I think... Just the way that when you were on your own dreams, the way you would wake up and you would be, I'm going to do this, I want to do this. Yeah. And then it completely shifts your perspective. Sure. And then you're changed your whole plans. Mm-hmm. And now you got to focus on, I'm going to do this for God, I'm going to do this for God. Yeah. It completely changes your whole perspective. And for me, it's like learning to surrender your plans to God helps you in the long run as a leader because then. Once you surrender your plans, you're going to be comfortable with surrendering so much to God as you go through your journey as a yeah. young leader. Mm-hmm. And like, you're going to be so comfortable with God shifting things in your life and just going and directing you down different paths. Because once you surrender your plans, it's like now you're like, okay, God, like I know that yeah. what you have is better, and I'm going to be able to listen to you easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess that kind of that'll kind of rub off on people too, like seeing you trust and yeah, seeing and you change you. and seeing. Yeah. Uh, how you're changing and stuff so yeah that kind of ties in on uh, how people rub off on you like yeah. we talked about last week that definitely helps as young leaders too mm-hmm. because like that rubbing off is what makes you that young leader and mm-hmm. builds that culture yeah. so that's number three and steps to becoming a young leader is surrendering your plans the fourth one is step into your calling and this is something that really like if it Surrendering your plans is the most important step, I feel like. This one's the next one because Mm -hmm. surrendering your plans and accepting your calling is great, but unless you step into it, none of that really matters. So either of y'all can answer this. Um, How do you step into your calling? Like, What does that look like? Well, I feel like that's a different question for everybody like i feel yeah. like it's not the same for anybody yeah. for like sure. first i don't even know what my calling is yet yeah. which is fine i mean but some people are 67 years old and don't even know what they're here yeah. for yeah so i feel like it's all different for everybody mm-hmm. yeah you got anything uh i'd say just like taking that first initiative like step taking yeah. the first step yeah. into it like whatever it is for you just jumping off the diving board mm-hmm. just going for it yeah Another thing, I think Chad Veach said this emotion is just keep saying yes. Mm-hmm. You know, like you yeah. have to keep saying yes to God. And that's kind of stepping into your calling. You just keep saying yes to what God has for mm-hmm. you. And the leadership will take care of itself because God will take care of that. You just have to keep saying yes and keep being that good influence. Yeah. And it'll all take care of itself. But I think another thing, like stepping into your calling is just being a servant, you know, being a leader, being involved. Yeah. And like just yeah. being present is one of the most important things. And I think that. That's all super important when it comes to stepping into your calling, just being available and being present. I mean, availability is the best ability. Mm-hmm. I think that's just yeah. a good value. So another thing with stepping into your calling is what impact does stepping into your calling make? Like what impact does that make not only on us as leaders, but on the people around us? Well, I think as like as us as leaders, I mean, I think it'll – like we said, it, it fulfills you more than yeah. just a dream. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. that's my water. This I'm, is mine. I, I don't know. I think yours is on the floor, dude. Yeah, that's yours. Oh. Dude, I never... Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. hilarious. I, I was looking at the beginning. I was like, where's my water at? That one's yours. Yeah. I think, like, five times out of that. That's all right. That's good. <laughs> so, if we're all sick, uh, we know why. So, what were you saying? Uh, I forgot. Um, Talking about impact. Oh yeah, like it'll fulfill you like more. Yeah. Like than your dream. Like because that's what you were made for and why yeah. you're here on this earth. So yeah. for sure. I think he said I think somebody I can't remember who said it, but he said the best two days of your life is when you're born and then the day when you your time. Yeah. 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 You got anything on that? Like how calling impacts us? Uh I think it doesn't just impact us. It definitely impacts the people you're around, the yeah. people that you hang out with every day. Like, yeah. them watching you step into your calling. Like, 
I don't know about y'all, but it when I saw my parents step in, into their calling, it definitely like brought me joy. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because those are your leaders. I mean, exactly, or one of your leaders. So yeah. like, they'll mm-hmm. they'll impact your life for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure, and that's a part of like young leadership. Like stepping into your calling is gonna gain you those that influence and following because people are gonna see that and they're gonna be inspired. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, leadership isn't anything if you're not inspiring anybody. Like it's leadership. It's not really there if you're not inspiring others. And I think stepping into your calling does that. You know, you just have that inspiration for others mm-hmm. and just makes them better and makes you a better leader. So that's the fourth step of becoming a young leader is stepping into your calling. Sorry, if y'all see us on our phones, we're looking at our notes. Yeah. yeah. We got our notes here pulled up so we don't miss any of the good stuff mm-hmm. that we got down for you guys. So, Gabe, what is our fifth step? All right. Our fifth and final step is live for your calling. That's a, such an important step. Yeah. You want to go in? Yeah. Y'all want, want to go in on that? What does it look like in out in your whoa living, living out in your calling? Yeah, that was such a typo. <laughs> yeah, we typoed on those guys. <laughs> it says, "What does that look like?" Question mark in your calling. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Eh. No. No. Not to me. That makes zero sense. So. Let's but work before that. we do that, I'll say living for your calling is also really important. I yeah. mean, all these steps are important, but yeah, this one's important too. So for sure. It's just like you can step into your calling for a couple days, a couple weeks, months, but you have to live for your calling yeah. every day. Like No doubt. It's not just a one and done thing. Yeah. You have to live yeah. for it. I feel like stepping into your calling, like was point four, was like getting started in your calling yeah. and living your calling is reliving your rest of life yeah. into that calling. Stepping in is the baby steps. And it's like, stepping in is like getting, like, stepping in is like you're getting on to the highway. Mm-hmm. You got to get up there and step out and drive onto the highway. Living is when you put the thing on cruise control and you're going straight down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The highway, you're headed down. You know, seat reclined. Just... Yeah, you're headed down <laughs> Kel West. Yeah. You know, cruising. <laughs> That's what living for your calling looks like. We is. were actually talking about that before we came. Y'all know they have like massage sheets and new cars. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, we were talking <laughs> That's about that. So That's crazy. That's actually crazy. That's like crazy. That dude just... Like you're sitting would, there cruising. So much like a massage. Dude, what if it like hit you in like that funny spot and you're just like <laughs> What? Yeah. So, I feel like that's, I mean, <laughs> stepping into your calling is like you're getting out onto the highway, you know, like you're making sure that everything's going right. Yeah. You're taking that step of faith, especially like, mm-hmm. really be like your first time getting onto the highway. Yeah, like yeah you get you're on yielding. There, you're, you're yielding, looking around, yeah. and then you get on there, you make that big step, and then you put that baby in cruise control, uh-huh. and you're just like you're just one hand. Cruising, not even actually, an hour. Yeah, hand, uh, foot off the gas, you know, you yeah. got that thing on 65 down Kel, <laughs> and then you get onto the highway, you got that thing on 80, yep. and you're just cruising. 80? Yeah, what kind of highway? What kind of highway? <laughs> talking about an interstate <laughs> yeah not a highway <laughs> highway interstate highway same thing basically mm, i mean yeah, you get the point okay, yeah, yeah 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 you get I the mean, point but <laughs> but yeah you're uh you know that's what it looks like it's yeah, just yeah. St- living out like is when you make that full step and you're going on your journey and every day is just you're living you're calling out and i mm-hmm. think you know for us it's like um we we know that we're supposed to this this podcast is us living out our calling for yeah. you guys because we know that we're supposed to help raise up the next generation and help raise the young leaders and so us it, doing this is living out our calling that's what it looks like is just making sure that you're going all in and just you don't stop yeah, yeah. i think we can add a question on here uh okay i think we can be uh how can you help somebody live out their calling okay so like that's a good question. I yeah. think accountability. Yeah, that, that, that's mm-hmm. huge, especially in leadership. Yeah, and we'll talk about this another like in another episode for sure about like we'll probably do one soon talking about like uh, what's important in re- leadership, like what is important, and mm, yeah. accountability is one of if not the most important things mm-hmm. in leadership, and that's kind of how you help those people get to their calling. Is you have to have somebody, you have to be able to hold somebody else accountable. And you also have to have someone holding you accountable. You accountable. Mm-hmm. And for us, like we all hold each other accountable. Yeah. Like we're, that's what we do. And really, you have to be able to do that. And that'll not only help the other person grow, but it helps you grow because they're keeping you in check and you're keeping them in check. 
you get to make that bond and just give each other feedback. But accountability is so big because it's really just how, like, if you have no accountability, you're going to be like a chicken with a head cut off just running around, you know? Yeah. And so I think that's just part of, like, helping somebody get to their calling is accountability. And you might have more, like, anything else on, like, helping somebody else get to their calling. Uh, yeah, just, like, being accountable for someone. And it's, like, when someone calls you out for what you're doing wrong, you can't take that. Like Kel said, you know, you, remember, yeah. you can't take it with an offensive heart. Like, you have to understand what they're trying to say. And, yeah. like, they're just trying to help you, so don't get mad at them for helping you. For sure. Yeah. I probably have something on here about accountability from Chad Beach. <laughs> of course. Let's see. Every episode. Every episode. Every episode, yeah. We're going to have at least, I mean, if you like, if you were like betting on how much we mention uh, Chad Beach on this podcast, it'd probably be at least five times an episode. <laughs> um, but I can't find it. But, you know, just he talked about how accountability is just so important especially for young leaders yeah. because mm-hmm. as young leaders you have to have someone to hold you accountable or else you'll grow too arrogant yeah and i think it's just important and helping somebody like your question was just helping somebody get to their calling i think really it's just being for them step by being there for them step by step and just guiding them through it kind of like we had people guide us through it it's yeah. like you have your leaders and you're their leader so that's your job is to just teach them what you've been taught and just help guide them to their calling and really just mm-hmm. the best thing you can do is offer your help and just pray for them and work through mm-hmm. it with them. And I think that's the best thing yeah, you can do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We forgot to do our icebreaker at the beginning. We didn't do an icebreaker. Huh. We, Should we do an icebreaker? Yeah, right let's do an icebreaker. Right? What do we call it if it's an icebreaker at the end? It's not an icebreaker. It's, an icebreaker. it's, it's not a, breaking any ice. We already broke the ice. The ice has been broken. Fantasy football broke the ice, but this is new. Another mm. question. Uh, okay. Water breaker. Water breaker? Because it'd be We're water. Not or <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Wait. We're freezer it could be like a freezer. We what? broke the ice. Now we're well, freezing it up. Well, the ice is up. broken. But now, but yeah, but now we're freezing it back up at the back end. Back to solid. Back to solid. So I think it'd be a freezer. Ice maker. Ice maker. Ice maker. Ice maker. Ice maker. Okay. Right. Ice maker. We forgot to do the icebreaker. Here's the ice maker. maker. Okay. Oh, that's kind, <laughs> that's of clean. kind of clean. That's a bar. You got right. anything? Uh, if you can meet one person, who would it be? Dead or alive? Well, I, I would usually I'd say Rich Wilkerson Jr., but we met him in July. That was the greatest. He called us his home dog. Yeah. yeah. That was the Dude. coolest thing. <laughs> I know. He was I like think. so cool. He sat there and talked to us for a minute. He too. almost yeah. dropped his drink. Yeah, I was going to put my arm around him, and I <laughs> hit his drink, and it almost fell out of his hand. That was yeah, like guys, the most embarrassing. Rich Wilkerson Jr. is basically our dude. Yeah. <laughs> our dude. If I can meet one person, though, hmm. dead or alive. Yeah. Ooh. Or not even real. Then not even real. real. I mean, obviously Jesus would be my number one. Yeah. Well, yeah. But but like us. So yeah. dead or alive, other than Jesus. Okay. <laughs> um, Deion Sanders. What? For real? <laughs> Deion Sanders. That's a. Hey. Why? Yeah. Why him? Because like Deion, like he's like the antics. Like he's hyped up all the time. Like he's really chill. He's laid back, and he's also like a genuinely good guy. Like he's, uh, I feel like he'd just be fun to be around. Like, all right, have a person you can like hang out with. Okay, he seems like that that type of guy. I was not expecting that at all. I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, what about you, Gabe? I don't know. You answer. I'm still thinking. I want to do Gru from the Despicable Me movie. Steve Carey or Steve Carell? Or like the real the, the real Gru. 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 Like with the yeah, long with the, like the actual Gru. Like yes. not even. Steve yes. Carell. Like, I want to go into the Minion movie bro. and meet Gru. Would you be a Minion? Or would you just be yourself? Would you be Matthew? A... No, I would be a Minion. I'm literally a Minion, now that I think about it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gabe. Gabe, what's your um, I don't know. I feel like it'd definitely be like a football player. What? Like, I'm, I'm just thinking of who. Tony Romo's up there, just because I grew up watching him. So, probably, yeah, Tony Romo. Tony Romo. Yeah, bro. Or, like, Des Bryant. Des yeah. Bryant. Des Bryant. Antonio, I think I would see Des Antonio more Brown. than... <laughs> is he... Yeah, no. Man, <laughs> not, not Antonio <laughs> Brown. Yeah, no, not Antonio Brown. Probably Des Bryant, yeah. Des Bryant. All right. Des Bryant, Deion Sanders, and Gru. Gru. <laughs> That's such a random... Yeah, <laughs> bro. 
Actually, uh, like, SpongeBob. Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. That's, that's I'd want to be SpongeBob. Okay, Lightning McQueen. Would you be a car in the like? There, there's yeah, no humans be, in the car movie. Yeah, you'd have to be, a, have car. To be a car. What kind of car what would you be? Yeah. Ooh. You gotta think though. This is like 2006, so they got like some old school. Some like Camaros. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to probably be a Camaro. <laughs> Why? They, I mean, they, they don't have like yeah the stuff we have now. Like, you can it's be 2006. like a minivan. A minivan. A minivan, like the one that drives by when he's like paving the road. Yeah. I'd be a forklift. Oh, that's a good one. Just cause. I'd be like Guido's partner, like the when he flips the tires, like the last race, oh, yeah. like three, two seconds. Yeah. Like, let me run it with Guido. Line <laughs> are, line you, are you talking about when he throws him up? When in he the throws him up, and, and he's like, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Dude, oh, yeah. Cars is my favorite childhood movie. Like, really? I love Cars. Dude, I've watched Cars three like a lot. Like three? even older. <clears throat> I watch like all of them. I'll, I'll sit down and watch. You know what movie's so underrated? What? what? Moana. No way. My yeah. nephew watches that all the time, and it is amazing. I love it. Oh, wow. You know why? Why? Because The Rock. The Rock's in that movie. The Rock. He's not in the movie. Actually, He's yes, like... he is. His character yeah. in the movie is literally him. <laughs> okay, I think I, could, I think I might have a new answer for a person I want to meet. Pat McAfee. Yeah, 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 I don't even know. Yeah, okay. He he's uh he used to punt in the NFL. Now he works for ESPN and uh, That was loud. <laughs> yeah, that was loud. Computer just rebooted guy. <laughs> now though, he works for ESPN and he's like on college game day and like he has his own show on ESPN. He's the funniest dude on ESPN. Like like if you just if you're if people watching will know who Pat McAfee is, no. I would want to meet Pat McAfee. I'm pulling up a picture. I, Pat McAfee is one of the most hilarious sports industry people I've ever seen in my entire life. Pat McAfee. Pat American sports analyst. Look, he is hilarious. Let me see a picture. This guy. Is he like Oh my gosh, he's kinda ripped. Yeah, he used to play in the NFL. Dude, he's the funny one of the funniest guys, like if you're watching, you probably know who Pat McAfee is, and you would probably 100% agree with me because Pat McAfee is a dude. He's my guy. I would. I thought my, Rich Wilkerson was our guy. Oh, well, he's like. Hey, we can he have two guys. Guy. We have two guys. All right. Multiple guys. The, if like, so my top two would be Dion. That's my water again. Oh my god! I <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, my top, my top two would be Deion Sanders and Pat McAfee. That that'd be crazy. Mine's Grew. I'm still sticking with Gru. SpongeBob and Des Bryant. All right, I have a ice maker. Another one? Yeah. Go. Okay. If you could have any car. Bro. I want a Tesla. Tesla. For sure. It's for That's so, like, overrated. I don't know. Teslas are not, not overrated, overrated Honestly, but give me, overpicked. Give me a Lambo. Really? A Lambo. I feel like it's probably, like, a gen- generic answer, but, like. Those are. I saw one when I went to Galveston. I saw two. Galveston got the Lambos, guys. Yeah. <laughs> We actually live in Galveston. Those were our Lamborghinis. <laughs> yeah. We actually drove them here. Yeah. We come to Wichita every day. What about you, Gabe? Mm, like a 2017-2018 GTR. GTR? Everybody wants a GTR. No, I love GTRs, hey. bro. Everyone Sorry. wants a Tesla, bro. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, like, man. Teslas are so cool. You know what? Oh, it drives by itself. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> you wish what if I like driving? Yeah, what if I like actually enjoy it? Then that, why do you have the cruise control on? Because you gotta, cause then you, your foot gets tired. You're driving for a couple of hours. And yeah. But you're not even driving at that point. Yeah, we still got to steer. Yeah. You're, really, you're going to trust a machine with your life. Don't we do that every day? Like if How? we go to the hospital? Oh, I don't think I go to the hospital every day. Oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if a machine... <laughs> Why are the doctors there if machines are in the hospital? Yeah. All right, let's move on. All right, yeah, guys. Okay. <laughs> Ice makers. We had a couple of today. All right, so closing thoughts. Do we uh, have anything? Obviously, let's go over these one more time. If you're taking notes, uh, here's your five steps to how to become a leader if you're taking notes. One, know you're called to be a young leader. Two, you have to accept your calling. Three, you have to surrender your plans. Four, you have to step into your calling. And then the last one is you have to live for your calling. Yes. Those are your five steps on becoming a young leader. And really just 
Yeah. You do those five things, not only will be you become a young leader, but you'll become more devoted and yeah. you'll find yourself growing. Mm-hmm. And it, it really it just helps you in the long run a lot. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of what we wanted to throw to you guys today. Yep. Uh, we had a lot of fun. You guys got any final comments? Yeah, I mean, uh, comment how you think the sound sound. Does it sound better? Yeah, yeah. comment on the new setup. Do y'all yeah. like it? How about the, the headspace? Is it better? Yeah, we <laughs> we got a lot of comments about us. Like they yeah. could just see the ceiling. And they're Should like, we give a couple of shout outs to some listeners? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, let's go to, to the listeners? let's go to the Spotify and look at the Q and A replies. So first, Chris Fag. Chris Flag, obviously Fague. our guy. Yep. Yes. Set up. We Hook already set up with the out. setup. Hook us up. Shout out to him. Uh, shout out to my cousin Rayleigh in Canton. She listens about three hours away. Uh, here's our three responses on the Spotify from the last poll. Make sure you go back and answer that. It was yeah. uh, what topic should we discuss in the future? We're going to be getting to some of these really soon. Shout out to Connor Killian, Emma Flippin, and then Stephanie DeWitt. Shout out to you guys. We appreciate you yeah. guys yes. listening. You. Also, shout out to my boy, Drew Haston, my guy listening. Uh, we got a lot of shout outs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want another shout out, answer the Q&A on this episode it'll probably be something like uh another one of the questions like what do you want us to talk about Mm -hmm. or what just a generic question but answer it and you might get a shout out in the next episode so final comments for today we love y'all we love love you guys guys. so much thank y'all for watching really excited uh episode two how to become a young leader now officially ended episode three on the way next week so be on the lookout we will see you guys later see you bye